CAM stands for Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services. Um, and it's a really broad term, so it includes lots of different levels of service. And when a young person is experiencing worries or problems which are really getting in the way of their life and stopping them doing what they want to be doing, they can go to their GP and get referred to a variety of different child and adolescent mental health services within SLAM. So there's a, a mood disorders clinic where young people with depression might also be seen with self-harm. There's a, a DBT service, which stands for Dialectical Behaviour Therapy, which is for young people with a diagnosis of emerging borderline personality disorder who also sell self-harm. And there are inpatient services, so that's uh, one of the settings which I work in. And we would see young people who self-harm and are felt to be at risk to themselves and, and need a more intensive treatment and somewhere where they can stay to feel like they're safe. I think it's most helpful to think about self-harm as a coping strategy, which young people use if they have a variety of worries or problems. And uh, we're not thinking about trying to take away that coping strategy straight away. We're usually trying to understand why it's there. It's really unclear whether there are more young people self-harming now than 10 years ago, and the research on this is mixed, but it does seem likely that there has been an increase in self-harm. We're also not really sure of the reasons why that might be, so partly it might be an increased awareness about self-harm now, and so we may be more aware that it's going on, uh, but also perhaps there are more stresses for young people today. The main methods of self-harm that young people often turn to uh, include cutting and something which is called self-poisoning in the literature, which means taking um, overdoses. Families of young people who are self-harming are really important and they can do lots to help support the young person um, just by being there. If the young person isn't, isn't talking, isn't opening up, I think it's really helpful for families um, to make a bit of time and, and to sit down and ask the young person if there are any worries. Having said that, I think it's important to get a balance between respecting the young person's privacy if they also want sometimes not to talk about it. Um, we get really positive feedback from the young people who, who come to our services and anecdotally, um, certainly when people are leaving the ward, they often say that um, it's been very helpful to understand and make sense of what's going on for them. Um, and that in itself can be quite a powerful intervention. So whilst there's been a lot of research done with adults who self-harm, which have shown a variety of talking therapies to be very helpful, those same studies need to be carried out still with children and teenagers, and that's work which is, is starting to be done now and is quite exciting. There's a, a really good access to talking therapies in SLAM, so to uh, different sorts of therapy like cognitive behavioural therapy and dialectical behaviour therapy, for example, um, and that's a real strength of service provision at SLAM. I think we can continue to listen to young people and really uh, take into consideration what they are saying are the most helpful ways of helping them and I think services are developing more flexible ways of working with young people, so using newer technology to communicate with young people, using mobile phones and texting to remind of appointments. And we're really interested in finding out what young people think is the most helpful thing. Um, but ultimately that's going to be different for everybody and we need to tailor our, our treatment packages to help the young person that we're seeing. Um, if young people or parents are worried about self-harm, I would really recommend a website uh, by an organisation called Young Minds. So if you Google Young Minds and self-harm, uh, lots of different uh, information is available there for parents and young people on what self-harm is, on the different sorts of treatments that are available and on different ways of seeking help. Um, young people can also go and uh, speak to their GP. They don't have to go with a parent if they don't want to, but that's the best way into accessing child and adolescent mental health services in SLAM. And there are a wide variety of services available and there are people who will help in a non-judgmental way.